the site of the monastic settlement that St. McCullough founded back in 620, 7th century. And I'm talking to Zena Hochter. You go back into the 7th century and you look at ecclesiastical enclosures, first of all. Monasteries at that time, like St. McCullough would have set up, would have been surrounded by an earthen bank. As a defensive measure, like we saw in Ringforts the last time we were over in, in Broadford Way, there would have probably have been a wooden church, a darchok or a, an oak house, as it was known at the time. And that's what in St. McCullough would have had as his church. And he would have uh, had his own little sort of hut and thing, and his followers within the enclosure would have had hut sites as well. Also within that enclosure outside, you have to have a source of water. So there's always a well associated with those enclosures, which becomes a holy well in later times. So there is a St. McCullough's well here outside the enclosure. You get the medieval period and you get chur medieval churches built, stone churches built, often on the site is adapted. And just here to the back of us is just what the archaeologists believe to be the footings of that church, the medieval church. And we have two uh, later tombs built here, family tombs, and on the far side of those tombs is another footing for that wall. So we're standing in the medieval church that would have been here at that time. It's now on the north side of this later church that's here. So within the church that you saw the chancel, you have the wall plaques of very important people who lived in this area, or the landed gentry who lived in the big houses of the area. So we have a lot of those, the O'Callaghan's, the Browns behind us. We have the O'Connell's, uh, Daniel O'Connell there. And of course, the McMahon's with their coat of arms are here as well. <laughs> 18th century grave slabs, which are known as leisures. Flat slabs, like I'm standing on, I'm standing on one of them. Um, but unfortunately, it's a very exposed site. A lot of wind and rain and tullock up here. And they, they, most of the inscriptions are gone off them. So unfortunately, we don't see an awful lot of iconography, which you would see, you know, symbols of the passion and so forth that would be on these slabs. But they, they're, very, they're very eroded, so that's kind of gone. The other thing I noticed here very much is the lines of unmarked stones, um, usually run in, in areas, early sites from north to south, lines from north to south that they have. But I think there might have been a little bit of movement in cleaning up this graveyard at times. And of course, the church itself was conserved, as you said, around the early 2000s by the local community. So there has been work. But there's a lot of information here on social history in this. In this, Besides the monastic settlement in St. there's a lot of social history here from the families who lived in this area over time. 